Jessica Henry, a triathlete, two-time marathon winner, and former collegiate high jumper. She graduated from Tufts University with a degree in economics and currently lives in Newport News, Virginia, where she's an analyst for Ferguson Enterprise. Her ultimate goal is to become the first African-American woman to turn pro in a sport where African-American women only make up 0.5%. She's passionate about increasing diversity in the sport and enjoys sharing her experience on her blog, whyironblogspot.com. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Sika Henry to the Conversation Pace Studios. Sika, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Uh, you told me that you had some trouble getting here. Your flight was a little bit, got a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. um, I was supposed to fly out of Norfolk at 7.15 last night and we didn't take off until after 11. So I didn't get home until about one last night. Well, you look fabulous. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And I'm glad you got, you got a little uh, rest, yes. right? Mm -hmm. I slept in this morning. I didn't work out. <laughs> Okay, good. Well, you look fabulous. You, didn't, you can you. skip a couple of workouts. <laughs> Not according to Girl, my you coach. you are jacked. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the level of, you know, triathlon, I guess you got to stick to a, a very strict program. Yes. So let's just jump right into the um, idea of you becoming the first African-American pro triathlete. Where did you get this idea and what inspired you to uh, accomplish such an amazing goal? Sure, so I've always had some bucket list items I've wanted to try. Um, like out of college, I wanted to try a marathon and um, I did one in 2007, I believe, and it was a disaster, but I finished. Um, I think I finished like right under four hours. Um, and then it actually took me about seven years to try another one, to work up the courage to try another one. And when I did it, it was in 2015, and I actually won it. And uh, my next bucket list item was to do a triathlon. And um, this was back in 2013, and I was going through a really rough time in my life. I was going through a divorce, and I was depressed, and not really working out, and not really getting out of the house and stuff. And I saw online that there was a local triathlon. It's called the Tidewater Triathlon. It's a really short sprint. It's only a 500 meter swim, and it was right nearby. So I signed up, and I didn't, um, I didn't own a bike. I never swam in open water. Um, but it was great because for those two weeks, um, it took my mind off of what I was going through um, in my own personal life, and I just focused on that race. And I did it, and uh, I came in probably last place, <laughs> but it was so much fun, and I got hooked, and um, I wanted to keep doing more of them. And, um, and I also noticed that at the race, there weren't very many African-Americans. It just it wasn't diverse. And the more I raced, the more I noticed how few minorities there were in the sport. And um, when I looked online, it said that there were 0.5% African-Americans, so less than a half percentage. And um, it just became important to me to continue and to uh, share my journey and hopefully inspire other people, especially when it comes to swimming. Okay, other than being a minority, yes. which we'll delve into later, what have been some of the challenges so far in conditioning yourself to become pro? It's a lot of training. Um, out of all the sports I've tried, and my parents had me try just about every sport growing up, to me, it's been the most uh, time consuming, I guess, because it's three disciplines. It's not just like, I've trained for a marathon, you know, and you get in the Sunday run and you know, you're just running daily. Not that that's not hard, it is. Um, but when it comes to triathlon, you're training for a swim, you're training for a bike, and you're training for a run. And I tend to do better at the longer disciplines. So I do the half iron, so that's a 70 mile race. So you're just spending a lot of time in the pool, on the bike, and running. So I think that just trying to balance the three sports and training twice a day, that's, that's been the hardest for me. Wow. It is a sacrifice to yeah. be at that level in any sport. So kudos to you. Thank um, you. One thing that I, I read about you is that um, you did a Rev 3 Williamsburg yes. triathlon. 
Yes. And you were out biked by the top three women. Mm -hmm. But what was most important to you was a PR, a personal best. Why is that so important? Because it shows progress that you're improving. Um, so, of course, when you're racing, you're competing against other people, but you're also competing against yourself. You want to know like that all the hard work that you're putting into it is showing and it's working and you're moving in the right direction. Um, so I think uh, I had done that same race about two years ago and I had biked seven minutes slower. And so even though I came in fourth at this Rev 3 race, I had biked seven minutes faster and it just like, oh wow, you know, like I might have gotten, I might not have gotten the place that I wanted, but I improved a lot, so. Okay, well, I wanna jump back into the question that, <laughs> about my being a minority woman in a sport where there's what, 0.5% mm -hmm. women? Uh, African American. African American women. Yeah. Oh, African Americans, men and women together. Men and women. So it's probably 0.2 percent oh African American God. women. <laughs> oh my God. Well, I have to say I've done a couple of triathlons, and I was the only black person. Mm -hmm. So I can relate to. I can see that 0.5 percent of African American altogether. So I want to know what is it that makes you continue to thrive in this sport and pursue the dream? Like, what is it? Is it, is it because you love the sport so much? Because I talk to a lot of athletes and they say, I just love the sport. But is there something, some underlying reason to, to continue pursuing the, the goal of becoming pro? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's definitely a wonderful feeling when I have a PR or I do really well. Um, uh, you know, you place or you win a race or something like that. That's a wonderful feeling. But I think it's the feedback and the messages that I get from so many other people, um, especially through my blog. Um, I write about just some of the down periods that I have and how tired I am and stuff like that. And people will write and say like, keep going and you're motivating me and I want to try a triathlon because of you. And that's when I'm like, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm doing a great thing. I'm influencing other people. And you know, somebody might take swimming lessons because of me and that's awesome. Or somebody who wants to get in shape and do their first triathlon because they read about my experience and my journey. Um, they want to try one now, and, and that's awesome. And most yeah. of those people look like you. Yes, exactly. That's what I was getting yes. into. <laughs> that's what I wanted uh, to 95 hear. 95% of them look exactly. like me. Yeah, you that's happen, correct. You happen to inspire uh, a whole group of women mm -hmm. who weren't even exposed to swimming right? to learn how to swim. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the swim part. You know I want to talk about the <laughs> swim part. The swim part. Yes. Did your parents grow up swimming? Were they swimmers? I know they, they were um, athletic, but when did they put you in swimming and how did they know about swimming uh, and how important it is? Like, I'm, shock I'm really shocked because my mother, she used to take us to the pool and just throw us in. Mm -hmm. We didn't have a coach. There was no technique. We would just walk around in um, four feet all day long. Right. <laughs> we, we thought we were swimming, but we weren't really swimming. We had no idea that it was a sport. Right. So what was it about your parents that made them want to teach you swimming at such a young age? Yeah. I don't remember ever not swimming, to be honest with you. Um, I just always remember growing up in the pool or at the beach. Um, I grew up with a pool in my backyard. So why they chose me to, p to put me in lessons, you'd have to ask them. I'm not entirely sure. I'm grateful for it, but I actually couldn't answer that question for mm. you. <laughs> okay. So what I want to know is y your family has a background in sports, yes. correct? Yes. So talk a little bit about that. Oh, sure. So um, my dad's dad, my grandpa, he was a track and field athlete and an amazing football player. He could run the 100-yard dash in under 10 seconds, which is huge back then. Um, and it would be really fast now. Um, but because of racial barriers, he couldn't go on to play in the NFL. But um, he did 
play football in college. And he also has this amazing music background. Um, he was a baritone saxophonist. I'm not sure how you say that. Um, and he has an album and he's been on Broadway. And um, so he ended up going the music route because of the racial barriers when it came to athletics. Okay, mm -hmm. fascinating. So this runs in the family. Yes. Breaking Although barriers. Although they have I uh, love it. fast twitch muscle fibers. Like my grandpa was a sprinter and I can't sprint for my life, so yeah. But you were on the <laughs> sprint team, right? You were in track and Yeah, field. wasn't I fast, to be honest with you. I mean, I did okay, like 50, 58 seconds and a quarter and I ran division three and I wasn't all American, but in the grand scheme of things. According to a 2017 Washington Post article, only one out of 107 historically black colleges and universities have a competitive swimming team. Do you feel the swimming aspect of the triathlon, along with its perceived risk, is a major deterrent for African-American participation in the triathlon? Yes, definitely. Um, and along with the statistic that you just named about 70% of African-Americans um, can't swim. So considering that the swim is the first leg of a triathlon, it makes up one third of the sport. If you can't swim, you're not gonna try a triathlon. And um, if you're not comfortable around water and all of a sudden you're thrown into an ocean with all these other people kicking and you know swimming over you and stuff, that's such a scary thing. So. Uh, yeah, I would say that that is one of the biggest hindrances. It is intimidating. Mm -hmm. Oh yep, my for goodness, sure. it's intimidating. <laughs> yeah. uh, and and you have to practice the open water swim. Yes. It's very important. Mm -hmm. You can't just swim in the pool no. by yourself or with your coach doing right. laps. But they do have sprint triathlons um, that take place in pools and YMCAs, so you should look into That's that. So right. it's possible. Yeah, That's you don't right. have to do open water yeah, open water triathlon. A lot of people would say that the hair, I don't want to get my hair wet. That's just too, how do you deal with the, with the hair issue? Do you deal with it or do you just go, hey? I don't want to get my hair wet either. <laughs> 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 I don't like it. Um, you know, I think you just learn to adapt. You, you learn how to style your hair after a while. Um, I used to get a relaxer and uh, I used to get a perm and when I started swimming regularly, all my hair broke out, broke off. Um, I started losing hair left and right. It was so damaged and I stopped getting a touch up and so my hair is all natural now. Um, and it's beautiful. Thank you. I think so too. It's actually healthier and prettier and shinier now that I don't get chemicals put in it. So, you know, I'm actually grateful that I took up the whole swimming thing and decided to go natural and stuff. Um, you like there's so many great products nowadays more black women are going natural and you know you go to Walmart and there we have our own aisle now black hair care aisle so you know you just play around with different products and stuff like that so yeah usually uh, my hair is wet <laughs> the majority of time but if I come on a show like this you know I'm gonna blow dry my hair and you know straighten it or whatever else but I don't think anything's wrong with putting it in a wet bun and going to work. And But you have a, a trick that you were telling me about, too. Oh, yes. Okay. So before I race now, um, I the day before the race, I blow dry my hair and I straighten it. And then the day of the race, I put on two caps. So I double cap. I put one swim cap on and then I put another one on top of it. And when I get out of the water in the race and I take the caps off, my hair is dry. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in the pool because I do flip turns, and when you flip, the water comes in, so ah. that doesn't work. But double capping does help. Double capping. Mm -hmm. Great tip. I'm going to yes. double cap. Yes. Oh, and a silicone swim cap is ah. the best. Um, it doesn't rip the sides of your hair out. Um, unlike the cheaper caps, then when you take them off, it breaks the hair off, but silicone ah. caps. Okay. They're a little more expensive, but I think it's worth it. Great advice. I love that. Mm -hmm. All right. So... We are going to bring on someone who inspires you and keeps you motivated. We're going to bring on your dad. Mr. Henry is coming on to the show. You guys stay tuned for more Conversation Pace. Welcome back to Conversation Pace. We have Sika Henry and we have another guest who just joined us, Fabian Henry, your dad. <laughs> How awesome is this? So your dad is an athlete as well. And do you guys compete 
in with each other's sport? Like who's going to get first place or how does that work at home? No, he encourages me. And whenever I say I want to quit, he's like, I'm 66 years old and I haven't quit yet. So you need to keep going. <laughs> what is it in you that keeps motivating your daughter? Well, you know, needless to say, I'm very proud of my daughter, all that she's accomplishing. Um, but, you know, needless to say, what she's trying to accomplish is so difficult. And um, so there's times when she feels, she, she expresses to me that she's feeling down. So, you know, I just try to encourage her to keep going. And, uh, you know, and I have my goals as well. So we're, we're on this r trip together. Okay. Tell us a little bit about your goals. Well, I've been training in the martial arts now for about 40 years. But, wow. Uh, yeah, primarily karate, though. But about eight years ago, my son came to me and said that he wanted to study jujitsu. So I said, let's do it together. So for the past eight years, I've been training in jujitsu. It's take, taken me eight years to get my brown belt, which is next to being the black belt, which is the ultimate goal. And I figure at the rate I'm going, I have about maybe two more years before I get my black belt. So I've given Seeker permission to quit on her dream the day after I quit on mine. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> so you can't quit because I don't see I don't see Fabian quitting anytime soon. No, I've never seen him quit anything. So, yeah, I'm in it for the long haul, too, then, I guess. So before you came out, I was trying to get this answer out of Seeker. And maybe you can give me this answer. What was it that made you put Sika into swimming at such a young age? You know, it's funny. I had this conversation with my wife a couple of days ago, and it turns out that, that we both arrived at the same def destination, but for two different reasons. My wife explained to me that she wanted Sika to learn swimming so young because she didn't swim. And she didn't want Sika not to swim. So that was news to me. I just discovered that a few days ago. But as for me, my view on it was that I grew up swimming. And like Sika, I never knew about not swimming. Because I grew up, um, I spent, even though I was born and raised in New York, I spent my summers in the South and up in Massachusetts with my cousins who were outdoorsmen. So I grew up swimming. And I know, so I know the value of being able to swim, especially with three quarters of the earth being water. So I wanted her to know how to swim. Let's talk about learning the technique behind mm -hmm. swimming, mm -hmm. the freestyle, and all those other styles of swimming. Did you, were you also engaged in technique, being coached as a, as a child? No, not me. You know, it's funny. I look at young people now and I see this dichotomy between the way they're being raised and the way I was raised. Now, I, I find myself being envious of my children in the fact that they have been so well trained, so well schooled, both my son and my daughter. You know, I didn't have that, but we grew up in a different time where we, we lived outside and so we grew up riding bikes. We grew up, uh, we would have pickup football games. You don't see that anymore. You see kids now, if you see, a, if you see kids on a baseball field, they're, they're in uniform, they're leagues, there's teams or football, but we had pickup games like that and we did everything. We swam, we ran bike, we played football, baseball, et cetera. So it was just a different time. So uh, in a sense, I'm envious of them in terms of the technical training they receive, but I'm also happy for the way that I was raised and grew up, you know, with everybody really, kids being more taking charge themselves and being, you know, guiding their, their own, you know, uh, development. So did you notice the, the talent um, as far as doing a sport like, competing in a sport like um, the triathlon, did you notice that early on in Sika? Well, Sika, first of all, um, we did expose her to just about everything. <laughs> <laughs> you name it, dance, <laughs> you name it, gymnastics, gymnastics yep. swimming. You know, so she was, we exposed her and we really don't impose on our children anything. We just expose them to the different disciplines and then we see what they like and what they, you know. But one thing about Sika, and I give her credit for this, everything that she's ever done, whether she liked it or not, she, you know, she put everything into it without complaint, I might add, unlike my son. <laughs> My brother is opposite, but he's the natural, oh, like, gifted he's, one. Yeah. He's so, I have not. to work so hard and put so much time and effort and so yeah. many hours into it. And he just, everything seems to come natural. To What's him. your brother's name? 
Niall. Niall Henry. Niall Henry. Okay. And today's his birthday. Oh. So like, <laughs> Happy, birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Niall. Niall. <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to parents as far as getting their children into swimming? What advice would you, what direction would you direct them into? What guidance? We need to know. Well, I want to know what you did. Tell us right. a little bit about that because it's time. We need to start getting our kids into the pool and break this stereotype. Well, fortunately, you do have wise. Even in the inner city, you do have wise, and most of the wise do have programs. And each of our children went through the the the, the Y program, where you become a what a guppy, a minnow, a shark. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> as you develop, uh, uh, I think Sika, you start out in what five months. I think she doesn't know. Oh, M mom is saying three months. Three months. Yeah, that's <laughs> the first time I mom took her in the pool. Three months. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so, awesome. yeah, but definitely uh, go to the Y. You take, for instance, um, uh, my son swam on the the Newark team, and they have a magnificent facility in Newark, uh, JFK. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay. and so they have a magnificent facility that that's really underutilized. So. Avail yourself, find out about the Y programs, definitely get your children involved. It broadens their horizons. As Sika mentioned earlier, we have a pool in our backyard. So typically, my son's in D Dominican Republic right now, but as he was growing up, we would always have a pool party. And we had friends that would come for the pool party and they were forced to sit on the sidelines and really not partake of all, you know, of the pool because they couldn't swim. But then the fact that they couldn't, that motivated their parents to get them. They went back to their parents and said, look, I want to learn how to swim. So, you know, it just broadens your horizons. You know, you can, from that you can scuba, you can snorkel, you know, you can enjoy the beach. You know, it just really um, broadens your horizons. Okay, and Sika, what words of advice would you give to other African-American women who are interested in trying the triathlon but don't know how to swim. Um, I'll piggyback off with my what my dad said about uh, going to a local Y and signing up for lessons, um, and also know that triathlon isn't just Ironman Hawaii, uh, 100 and 140 miles. There's you know there's sprint triathlons um, where you can swim in the shallow end and stand up if you feel uncomfortable and then get off and bike and run. So you're not just limited. Um, it's not as extreme as they show on TV. There's so many different distances. And uh, you can also go on usatriathlon.org. Um, there are coaches online and there are um, facilities you can find within a radius of your house. Um, and there's a list of local races, and I think you can actually uh, filter it down to, I just want to do a pool swim, uh, short distance, something like that. So, um, you know, it's, it's not impossible. Everything seems impossible until you do it. The resources are out there. Yes. Yeah. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, they are out there. You just yes. have to, you know, make an effort. Right. Get like, out uh, there and find it. Also, it's there. Black Triathletes uh, Association, they have a Facebook page, and there are a lot of newbie people on there um, that go on and ask questions, and then there are a lot of people who have been in the sport for a really long time that also uh, go on and respond. So any questions, you can go on the Black Triathletes Association Facebook page. You know how the black running um, organizations, we have Black Girls Run, Black Men's Run, and all these black girls. There's a black kid swim. Yes. It's a Black Kids Swim organization. Mm -hmm. yes. I was excited when I found that. I was contacting them and sending yeah. them emails. I was like, yeah. yes. But yeah, you just have to look. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you can spend time looking for your favorite outfits in the <laughs> shoe online, you can right. go online and find these resources. Yeah, if everything's right at your fingertip, all this information, so there's no excuses. Mm -hmm. No excuses. Okay, any last words? We're going to close out soon. Anything else you guys would like to say to the audience? Well, the only thing I would say, um, you know, avail yourself of what the opportunities you do have now. You mentioned my father, Seeker's grandfather, and uh, his first love was sports. That was his passion. But he lived during a time when, of segregation when blacks were not allowed to participate in professional athletics, you know. 
Unfortunately, he passed in 94, so he didn't live long enough to see Sika's journey right now. But I'm sure he would be so pleased to see that she's trying to um, uh, make her way into the pro ranks of another sport. So, so uh, things, you have opportunities now that he didn't have back then. Avail yourself of those opportunities. Beautiful. <laughs> he was a musician. Yeah, Hall yeah. of Fame. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, jazz. Read the article. Mm -hmm. Ah, thanks. Amazing. <laughs> Good jeans. <laughs> That's I Linda, our, our stage manager. <laughs> she loves. She loves this. Yeah. So I just want to um, let you know that I am so grateful that you guys are here today. Well, thank and you. And yeah, I you. want people to know where they can find you, Sika. Just look right into that camera and let people know where they can find you. Sure, um, I have a blog. Um, it's called whyirun.blogspot.com. Uh, you can go on there and I update it every, pretty much every month um, after every race. Uh, the next race I'm doing is Ironman 70.3 Atlantic City and I plan to blog about that after. Uh, about hopefully how well I did and how high I placed. Um, and then after that, I will be in uh, Baltimore, Maryland for the Baltimore Festival um, as part of the National Black Marathoners Association. Uh, so if you're out there, I'll be there as well and you can talk to me in person. I wanna thank Sika and Fabian Henry for coming on the show. I'm Coach Nicole and I wanna thank you for letting us bring you up to speed at Conversation Pace. It's over. <laughs> all right, all now right. we got some editing to do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I didn't know the good jeans were going to go on camera. Like, <laughs> sure, we got to get you in a picture, too. <laughs> I, was, I was actually thought I was poking them. I'm sorry, did I mess up that whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I liked it. I hope it makes the cut. <laughs> you know? To learn more about Sika Henry, simply follow her on Instagram and check out her blog, whyirunblogspot.com. And also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like Conversation Pace on Facebook.